In this video, we're going to show you how to use the Shuttle Pro 2 settings for the Shuttle Pro 2 by Contour Design. Now, the Shuttle Pro 2 is a keyboard replicator that allows you to assign keystrokes to certain buttons and it's a very ergonomically correct keyboard so that you can find all the buttons without looking at it. The settings are located up in the top right hand corner of the menu bar on a Mac. Uh, on the PC they're down on the bottom right hand corner but we're going to click on our settings panel and in it if you're in Lightroom, you should see the develop keyword and library settings that you have installed with my settings that you purchased on jaredplatt.biz. If you haven't purchased those or if you haven't installed them, you need to install them in order for them to show up here. Otherwise, the only one that will be available is Lightroom CC, which ships with the Contour Design Shuttle Pro 2. In order to find the dialog box to control those, we hit Shuttle Settings down at the bottom of that drop-down, and we will see that we have the dialog box that allows us to alter and change and install whatever settings we choose. Now, there is a completely different support video on the topic of installing these. If you'd like to adjust them or change them, you can always click on any of them and then go in here and click on a particular button and change the settings below. Uh, but our discussion today is how to use these and how I use them. So, in order to show you how I use them, I first want to show you the actual Shuttle Pro 2 and how you can see what buttons I'm assigning. So if you hide Lightroom and you go to the folder that you downloaded when you purchased the settings, you'll see that it comes with a Shuttle Pro 2 5 and a Shuttle Pro 2 LRCC. Also, if you're using Lightroom 6, that's also LRCC. This will work for both of them. Click on that folder, and inside it, you'll see all the developed settings themselves, the keyword settings and the library settings, but you'll also see PDFs that show you what we're doing with each of those. So let's look at the library settings in the PDF. The PDF shows you that we have all of these buttons assigned to things like pick, unpick, reject, and grid. The second set are one star, two star, three star, red label, loop view. Then there's a shift key, option key, command key, zoom in and out, survey, and then run a macro. So all of those things are available to you. And if you look at your keyword settings, you'll see that they change completely. And you can browse through these at your leisure whenever you feel like it. Um, but I'm going to show you how I use them. And then, of course, Develop Module has a completely different set of keys. I suggest that you go in and print those out, set them next to you, and then start playing and see what those keys do, because that's the best way for you to learn. Now, I'm going to show you how I'm going to use them inside of Lightroom. When I'm in Lightroom and I want to uh, work on some images. The first thing I'm going to do is in the library module I'm going to select images. So I'm going to go to the Shuttle Pro 2 and I'm going to click on library because that's where I am. Inside the library I'm going to use my right thumb to click on the third button from the bottom and that is kind of a long skinny one so I can feel it and it's the most prevalently used uh, button uh, because I push it so much. When I click on that button, it's going to run the macro. This button here, run macro, this is what we're going to be running. And that macro that we're running is this. When I click on that button, it's going to look at the images I have selected currently in the survey mode, and it's going to take the last one, and it's going to choose the next six to look at. So it just grabs the next six, and I can look through them, and if I like an image particularly, I can click on it. And then if I click my top left hand button, which is the pick key, you can see that it's the pick key, um, it will go ahead and pick that photo. And if I use one of the three star images buttons, which are the second row, one, two, and three stars, you will see that it adds a two-star rating to that photo. Um, 
Then if I want to collect the next six, I just simply click on the next six button again, and it runs the macro and grabs me the next six images. If I want to zoom in and see if something is sharp, I click on the image I want to see if it's sharp, and I click the zoom key, which is going to be this key here, right here, I click that with my thumb. So I zoom in, and now I zoom out because I know it's sharp, and now I could pick it, now I can star it, and then I'm going to move on to the next six. So that's how I use it in the library module. Now there's a lot more to it than just that because there's one through three stars. If I use the red label, that means that it's not quite sharp and I'm going to have to go in and adjust it. If I want to use the loop key, that allows me to be looking at an image and click on the loop key just to see it full size for a second. And then if I want to go back to the survey mode, I use my thumb to click on the survey button, which is this one right down here at the bottom uh, right hand side of the Shuttle Pro. Again, I keep my shift option and command keys available to me because that allows me to select multiple images um, while I'm working. So that's pretty, pretty well explained at that point. Go play with it, have fun with it, change things that you want to change. If you find yourself not using this particular key, change it to something that you might, might work better for you. Now let's go to a different set of settings. Um, we'll hide Lightroom. I'm going to go and show you the keywording section. So the keywording is also a library module centric set of settings. So if I go to Lightroom and I wanted to keyword, now I'm going to be in the grid module and I'm going to be keywording. And when I keyword, I like to use the little spray key can here. When I pick it up, I can tell it that I want to keyword images and then I can tell it what keywords I want to use. And in this case, it would be girl, child, that will work for now. And then I would want to spray those by simply clicking on an image. And so if I click here and keep holding the click down, I can spray and you can see that it's adding that keyword by that thicker key line. So all of those now have those two keywords available to it. But when I'm keywording, I want to have a little bit more control over it. I want to be able to quickly get to certain keywords um, and add keywords and, and things like that. So when I'm working inside of the keywording tasks, I'm going to use this keywording set here. That means that I have to go up to the Shuttle Pro 2 and click on keywording. Once I'm inside of the keywording tasks, I'm going to, I can still pick and unpick and reject and go back to the grid. All of those things are available to me. I can one star to the three stars. I can blue label now, which blue label for me is when I'm going to publish an image. So that, that just cues me into the fact that I'm going to publish. And then escape keywording is really important because when I'm over here and I'm typing, let's say in this particular image here, I know that I'm, I've got her reading a book and so I want to keyword that image differently than I'm, I've been keywording with my spray can because my spray can, I'm just spraying images like this and all of these have been spray canned with girl and child. But then I, I find myself on this image and I want to do something more to it. So at that point, I'm going to go in and I'm going to enter a keyword. So you see this button with the left, uh, with my thumb on the left hand or the right hand bottom side of the Shuttle Pro 2. That is for entering keywords. So all I do is click that button and it puts me over here into the keyword entry point. And then I can type in book and bookworm and then hit enter and that enters it into the keyword area. But the problem is, is that once I hit enter, I still am not out of this area here. And so then if I start trying to do something, it won't happen because I'm, I'm still inside of the keyword entry paragraph area. So that's why I have this button here, the escape keywording section, or that button on the top right hand uh, side of the Shuttle Pro 2 so that I can click on it and it escapes me from, so if I'm in this area, I can click on that and it escapes me out of there so that I don't have to uh, do something like 
hit enter again or something like that. So um, I just simply click that button and it takes me out of there. If I want to add additional keywords while I'm spraying to my keywords that I'm spraying, so I want to add some extra ones to the spray can, but I don't want to type them in. I just want to find something that makes sense for that specific photo. If I use my pinky and click on, let me show you the key, if I click on this one, the hover keyword select button, when I do that, it will hover a little keyword set and it shows me recent keywords I've used. Or I could choose from a list of drop downs of other types, like uh, I could do child life portraits. And now I can see, oh, there's boy, girl, play, black and white, skin, toys, color, friends. Um, and in this case, none of those really work, but I'm going to do recent keywords because I know that Indy is one of those recent keywords. That's her name, so I'm going to click on Indy. And that just added Indy down here to the uh, set of keywords that I'm going to be using inside of the spray can. So it just added those to the spray can. So now I'm going to start spraying, and now Indy is being added to all of those images that I'm spraying on. So that's another useful tool. Remember, I also keep the command and option keys available because in, in the absence of some other useful key, it's good to keep some of the option and command and shift keys available um, when you need them most. Um, so just be aware that we have those available to you. But the last one that you should see is the far right button, which is the keyword painter button. You click that with your thumb. Going back, if I want to put the the spray can down, I just simply click that with my thumb and it puts it down here. If I want to grab it again, I push it with my thumb and now I'm back into spray canning uh, all my keywords. So that's a real brief intro to the Shuttle Pro 2 keywording settings. That has just been recently added in 2015. It's a very useful tool. I use it all the time and hopefully you'll enjoy it. The last set of settings that we want to work on is the develop settings. So if we go up to the Shuttle Pro 2 settings options and click on develop settings, that's going to presuppose that we are in the develop module. So I'm going to click on the develop module and now I'm here in the develop module working on adjusting images, not selecting images. And that's why all of the buttons are going to change. So let's close this and let's show you the new settings up here in the PDF for develop. And in the develop, you can see that it's all of this is based on synchronizing settings, changing things to black and white, using your brush tool and your gradient tool, things like that that you're going to use all the time. And so we are going to go into Lightroom and start working on an image. If I want to change it to black and white, I simply hit the center of the bottom row at the top of the Shuttle Pro 2, and it will change it to black and white. If I want to... Uh, Let's say I change that to black and white, and then I click on the next image, and I want that to go to black and white as well. Simply click on the left pinky, and that's going to take all the settings from the last photo and apply them to this photo. So even if I had done a whole bunch of adjustments, like let's say I had increased the exposure, and I had uh, contrast, and I brought the black point down, and clarity up. So let's say I'd done that. If I click on another image, whatever image that might be, and I want all those settings applied to it, I simply click with my pinky, and now all of the previous adjustments are available. So that's this button here, the second button up, which is the previous. The same is true if you want to synchronize settings that you've already put into one photo across a series of photos here. So I'm going to shift click by using my pinky to click on this modifier key over here to the left and then I'm going to click on the last image that I want to adjust and then with my thumb I'm going to click the sync settings key here and that's going to synchronize all of the settings across here then I'm going to use the gradient tool button which is going to be right here you see that button there and there's the gradient tool and the brush tool I'm going to use that gradient tool button in order to open up my gradient tool. 
you'll see that I'm already on the light burn area here. So my effect is going to be a light burn and it's already opened up the gradient. So I don't have to go over here to click on it. It's just already available. I can burn in that little lighter area there and then I can click the gradient tool again to shut that. And then if I want to do a little bit of burn, click that second button over, which is this one, the brush tool. I'm going to click on that button and now I've got my brush open and it's still got the same burn associated with it. So the same preset is ready. And so I can come in here and just burn the areas that need to be burned in addition to that gradient. And then once I've done that, I click on the brush tool again and it drops that down. And now I've burned this in and fortunately I was in auto sync. So because I was in auto sync, all of these photos have the same burn to them because they were all being auto synced. If for any reason I want to then say click on this image here, but I want to keep them all selected, I can turn off the auto sync by going to this button here, which is the, or this one here, which is the auto sync toggle button. And when I do that, it's going to turn off the auto sync. You can see that button turns on and off based on that far right button that I can click with my index finger. So I can turn something off and then I can turn on the brush tool and I can do a little burning here and then I can turn the auto sync back on and then do some more burning somewhere else that would, that would happen to all the photographs. So that's a really useful tool as well as that auto sync on and off because you'll want to toggle that on and off based on what you're doing. So you can see that there are a lot of great tools here at your disposal to help keep you from having to go from the image itself or from the images down here over to the, um, to the adjustment areas here or vice versa where you may be up here and you want to toggle something over here um, and you don't have to move back and forth. For instance, if I have, uh, I'm in the crop tool, let's say. In the crop tool, if I've done some cropping, let's say I crop this image down like that. Once I crop it, if I want to go to the next image here and crop, I would have to go, if I click the arrow buttons, it moves the crop itself. And that's not going to help me get to the next image. So instead, I'm going to use these two buttons here. Select image, previous image, select the next image. So the two top middle buttons are going to help me navigate and they are using a completely different shortcut that takes me from one image to the next, but it still leaves me in the crop tool. So I'm able to go in and hold the shift key down and do a little cropping to this image, never leaving the crop tool and go to the next image and do a little bit of cropping on that image as well and and then go back to the other image and readjust that a little bit back to the other image readjust that so you have the ability to do a lot of work within uh, the crop tool without having to come down here to click on an image or without having to turn it off and then use the arrow keys and then turn it back on also you'll note that there's a button down here on the bottom right hand side that you use with your thumb that is the crop tool. So you can also turn that off and on based on the crop tool button. Well, that's your tour to the Shuttle Pro 2 settings that you can get at jaredplatt.biz. I really highly suggest that you go to the PDFs that are included and print them out and study them and then play with the settings with those sitting next to it so that you really get a feel of where things are. And then once you've got that down, uh, you might want to change a couple things if you're stumbling over a key that you don't necessarily like. And you would do that by going to the settings options inside of the drop down menu and click here and then just edit to your heart's content until these keys work for you exactly the way you want them to work. But I I imagine that you'll like the way they are right off the bat.